friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We're about to embark on a new project. Yes, it's another one of those old beater type uh, instruments. At least that's what you would normally call these old guitars, but this one is in really exceptionally good shape. So take a look here. Yes, it's an old silver tone guitar, but look how nice it is. It's very, very good shape. You know, it's just about as good a shape as you're going to find on an old guitar like this. I mean, it's got its little nicks and dings and things, but nothing, nothing so terrible, you know, uh, especially for the, considering the age. Now, I don't know if this is, I, you know, my guess is it's plywood. As a matter of fact, I'm almost positive it's plywood, but we're going to inspect that to see. Now, I can see, I can see, um, mahogany on the back there and I'm trying to find a distinctive pattern in the grain that I could look on the other side and see if I see the same pattern and I got to tell you I don't think it's the same it's ma it's mahogany on this side too but I'm thinking it's mahogany plywood just based on what I'm seeing I don't know I could be wrong on that I kind of see something that looks similar but it's so dusty in there it's hard to tell well here's the here's the peg head by the way it's a silver tone and there's the look at the tuning keys on it as well for those of you who like such a thing here's the serial number I'll read it off to you L five eight zero eight one zero five double checking it here there's a space between the zero and the eight by the way so L five eight zero then a space and then eight one zero five is what I would call it. We're gonna look inside it in just a second, but while I'm thinking of it, I think the biggest problem with this guitar is the neck. This, you know, straight edge from the top from the top of the saddle to where the the bottom of the straight edge, and the straight edge is laid flat on the on the neck. I would say that's a full eighth inch or more. I, it might even be more. Let me just try to get a good idea. Yeah, I'd say it's it's every bit of a full eight, eighth of an inch, and it's probably just a little bit over that. So it's a quite a ways down, 125 thousandths, roughly three millimeter, maybe three and a half millimeter down below where it should be. It should be just about level with that. Level would be fine, but. Uh, you know, below it, anytime you start below it, like right there, you're a little below it already, and then when you drop down below it yet further, it's uh, quite a bit. All right, so that makes it, that means the strings are going to be really high here. If you put strings on this, just, just the angle is going to lift them up quite a bit right here. You know, you got to remember too that it'll be under tension, the neck will be pulling up on it and everything, so I think it's going to be quite high. The uh, neck doesn't appear to be loose, although it might be. It does have a bolt on neck and there is a bolt through on the inside that I can see. The other unique thing about this before we look inside is the way the strings are attached. The strings actually go through here and the button sticks on this side, it comes out here and then it wraps over the top, goes over the saddle and down. And to some degree, that's a good thing because it's pulling from this side, pulling that way, and then pulling over. But still in all, it's pulling up. It's going to, you know, th th that last place right here where it makes contact is really where it's going to get the leverage. So it's still going to pull forward. But it does maybe spread the stress out a little bit differently than most. The bridge appears to be tight, so I don't think we're going to be messing with that, I don't think. Although we may change our tune once we get some tension on the strings. Ordinarily, the easy thing to do would be to cut this bridge down and just drop the saddle down. Then you'd be good to go because it's plenty high. But if you cut this one down, you're going to be cutting into where the strings go. So you can't really cut this bridge down. So you have to leave the bridge like it is. That's the real negative of having the strings go through the bridge this way and, and come back around. So be that as it may, this guitar is in for a neck reset and a setup, and that's probably where we're headed. I don't think we're going to be able to do this without a neck reset. Let's look on the inside now and see if we can decide if this is real wood or not. Now you can see the fine grain going down through here like it's spruce. And this would be, I'd almost call this like a bird's eye spruce if there is such a thing. 
you can see little bird's eye things in there. It's almost like bird's eye maple, but it looks like spruce. It doesn't look like maple. It could be birch or something else too, by the way, which I'm not all that familiar with some of those other woods. But I mean, it looks like it's a softwood, so it's, you know, I would say it's spruce, but it looks like it has bird's eye in it. Now let's see if we can see that same thing on the inside. It should be there. We've got Colin's light that he gave me, and we'll stick that in here. And then we'll put our mirror inside, and we'll see what we can see. Let's see if we see that same bird's eye pattern. Well, you know, believe it or not, I think it's there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, this pattern right here is there. I can see that in the in the wood. So that's a real top, a real wood top. By the way, the I can see the serial number is printed up here on the top also. It's the same serial number as what I read off to you. And it does have the same space in the lettering, the numbering. Yeah, it's definitely, I would say it's definitely a real wood top. That's a solid piece of wood. And I I was I'm really kind of surprised at that based on the all that figure and everything in there. Let's see if we can see over here just to kind of double confirm it here. Yeah, I'm pretty much seeing that's a real top. I, I can see this same little line going through here. There's a little curl going through here, and I can see that too. So yeah, I pretty positive we're talking real real wood there. Now on the back, I don't know. Back and sides, it's hard to say. Let me see if I can see any grain that would make sense to see on the outside. Almost look like there's a seam in this right here. I don't see it out here. Don't know for sure. I'm, you know, I'm just looking at it. You know, I'm sure you could probably find this on the internet and know what it is. But uh, you know, I'm just looking at it, and as far as I can tell, I'd say the back and sides are plywood, and the top is real wood. That's my guess. But it is a guess, so just know that. Well, we got our work cut out for us because it's a bolt on neck. I think I'm just going to take the bolt out and see what happens, and see if we see any looseness or see if. You know, it looks like we could get lucky and maybe the neck will come out because if it will, then it won't be such a big job. For getting the bolt out of the inside, I've got just a uh, 3 8 inch socket here. And then I got me one of these little, you know, finger ratchets, if you will. And that will reach in there and be able to turn it out real easily. I, I bought a set of these finger ratchets uh, for especially for turning this. Uh, you know, it gives you a little bit more leverage. It's a little bigger than that. Plus I can hook this on that flexible shaft on the outside of the guitar and, and use this to spin it. So that's the main reason I got it. But it came with the other sizes too. And since I'm inside this guitar, this is really handy to use inside there. So I just thought I'd point that out in case anybody hadn't thought of that for working inside of guitars. It's really kind of nice. I've got both nuts off. This is the nut that was on the outside, and this is the nut on the inside. So both nuts are out. I don't see anything coming loose, unfortunately. That makes me wonder how, how that's in there. I can tell you that the rod is going on an angle like this. It's, it's going downhill like this. I can tell it's, it, it's up higher here and goes down and I can even see the angle in the rod now that the nuts are off of it. So that's kind of weird. It may just be one continuous rod driven through there, but I don't know that for sure. I'm trying to get the washer off on the inside. There I got it. All right, now the question is, does the rod go in or out? And I can't get the rod to move at all with my fingers. There's a washer on this side too. And you know, the chances, I mean, it's a very good possibility that the washer, the as tight as it is in there, it could have the rod jammed too. So 
I'm trying to get the washer out and then we'll know if the rod is free. There it goes. But there is another washer under there so that's it's very possible these washers are making this uh, pinching this rod and, and that's why the rod won't move maybe if we get lucky but I don't often get that kind of luck on these kinds of things. There, I think I might have got it. That did loosen the rod. We got lucky. Ha ha ha! Once in a while you get lucky. So I can probably pull the rod out now. I, I've already pulled it a long ways, but it's kind of getting stuck again. There we go. I was able to push it with the end of that. And I got the rod out. There you go. So there's the rod. The rod is slightly bent uh, right there probably from years of pulling up on this. Looking this over really close, you know, I was pretty sure this was the case already before I looked it over really close, and that is that this neck has been glued. You know, someone probably didn't understand the technology here, and they glued the crack, and the glue, I can see glue all down in here. There is a pretty big open crack, and they just more or less filled it with glue gonna see what I can do about getting the glue out of there and I typically go to my trusty little exacto knives when I have to do that and yeah you can see the glue coming out there it's yeah there's a wide crack let me just see if you can see a before and after there get it up here close enough you can see where I picked the glue out of the crack there and it's a big wide crack and this this is full of glue I think you can see that Anyway, that's what the problem is. It's, you know, the, the neck might possibly be loose if we get all this glue off. It looks to me like it's been done here too. Now, this the problem with this is you're likely to scratch the instrument, chip the finish, all that. You know, you got to do what you got to do. I don't think the glue goes in very deep. It's just mostly on the surface here. So I think I'll try cutting it here. It looks like it's, it, that's working better because I can push inward and it's not chipping the finish so much. It looks like it's working. The glue is pretty much collapsing down in the slot as I cut down through here. My guess is they've glued it under here too, and they, I believe they have. Hopefully they didn't do any better job gluing it under here than they did on that. Well, I think it might be hot knife time on this, on this part. I think once I get this one loose though, I kind of got a feeling this rest of this is going to be loose, but I'm not sure of that, so I'm going to try to get this loose first. You know, before I go to all the trouble of steaming everything, you know, just take it a step at a time here is really what I'm trying to do to determine how much, how far I have to go. You can probably see I've got my bridge heating tool here. Got it turned on. I just turned it on just as I turned the camera on. So it's not even warm yet. You know, I can still hold it here with my fingers. It's, but I can also feel it starting to warm up just a little bit already. It warms up pretty fast. The temperature, it's only been just a couple of minutes. The temperature is already up to 333 degrees and it's climbing fast. It's just hit the 341, 42, 44, so it's climbing very fast. You know, I put this little block here to keep this from tipping over. The handle lays on that. I'm just moving it around on here to spread the heat around a little bit. It's getting pretty darn warm. I have a feeling it's almost to the 380 that I have it set at and I'm pretty there it just hit the 380 so there you go so I probably can start sliding this under there it went it went pretty easy you can tell it's melted no question that side goes in pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now and see what I can do about getting under there I think we got it. 
Alright, so now does the whole neck come loose now? Maybe a little bit. I feel like this whole area up here is completely loose. I went down through the seams with this. Can't really get much progress with this in the seams. I don't feel like it's very loose down in this area. I really think I'm gonna have to try to do some steaming. Uh, didn't really wanna have to go to that extreme, but here I believe we're gonna have to. So let's take this fret out and see what we find when we drill down through there. So we'll get a drill and drill a couple holes and see if we hit a pocket there. I'm hoping we do. At first I wasn't sure I hit a pocket, but then I think I did, especially on this side. Then this side later seemed like it was okay too, but I'm not 100% sure on this side. But anyway, we're going to have to try the steam deal and see if we can't get down through there. Sorry about all the noise. You've got the steam going on down here and I had to turn the air on in here because it's getting very hot with that uh, little Coleman stove heating up the pot. You can see the line is running up here, got the needle down in the neck, and you can see the steam kind of pumping up in here every once in a while. I got a 3 30 seconds bit. I think that's a little smaller than the two and a half millimeters, so that's what I'm going with. That should let it go down in there real easy, I hope. Hopefully I can get it back out of here. It's so tight. I don't think the steam is doing very well because it's so tight. There we go. It goes in that hole easy now. And I'll have to do the same thing here. It's been going on for another five or so minutes. I don't think you're going to be able to see in there, but there is some moisture coming around that little bolt hole. I don't know if you can see the bolt hole there. It's hard to tell in the camera if you can see that, but, but the, the, the little hole there is starting to show moisture around it. Um, it's pumping pretty good now. I turned up the heat a little bit. And so we're getting some moisture in there now. Switch it on the other side again. I can twist the neck a little bit this way now. It's a little twisty, but I can't hardly move it any other direction. So in other words, I can twist it back and forth, which kind of doesn't make any sense, but that seems to work where nothing else seems to do much. I'm getting a little bit of movement side to side now. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting some movement. All of a sudden it just started loosening up. Maybe that getting it on that side made the difference. Had a little development. Uh, I can move the neck more now, and water is finally coming out the seam on the down there at the bottom of the neck on the front. Not anything in on the inside any more than we had. So it's starting to loosen up now. I can definitely tell it's loosening up. You can probably see some movement there now. You know, every time you wiggle it, you get a little bit more moisture in those spots. You gotta be careful though, you can, you can go too far and break something. So I'm just trying to, you know, just wiggle it enough to, I'm not trying to really force it. Just wiggling it just enough to keep that moisture moving. I may be there on the heat. I think I'm gonna kill the moisture now and see what else I can do. Again, the air's still on, sorry about that, but it's hot in here now. I think, I think the neck's loose. I, I started tightening it up with this and, and I think just tightening it up is already pulling it out. I couldn't pull it out by hand. Look at there, it just pushed it right out, no problem. Yeah, that worked great. Easy, really actually very easy. It was mainly just getting the steam down in there. Once I got the steam down in there, it was a piece of cake, really. Just thought I'd let you know, I you know now can confirm 100% certainty that the sides are definitely plywood. I still am not 100% sure on the back, but because the sides are plywood, my guess is the back is also. And just looking at it, that's what I would say, just because I, I see lines that I don't see on the opposite side, but 
but it's much more difficult to tell in the mahogany because the grain is so t tiny. I might add that this neck has been either reset or it was shimmed at the factory, but I'm pretty sure it was reset. I believe whoever reset it put all this extra glue in here and put all these shims. There's lots of shims in here. There's a great big long shim here. There's two shims here and there was another shim on the inside in here. So it's definitely been worked on. My guess is that it was done after the factory. Uh, I don't think this was at the factory just based on what I see here. But, but there's no way to know for sure. I also kind of think that whoever did it added this piece under the fretboard. I don't think this piece is original that's on here right here for a couple of reasons. Number one, it doesn't match the color. Number two, it's a, a piece of different kind of wood and I believe it's a plywood also and it's just stuck underneath here. I imagine there was a pretty big gap under this because of the bolt-on neck and so somebody was trying to fill that neck. I mean they did a good job. I'm not picking on their job, you understand. I'm just trying to analyze where this thing's been and I would say you know with about 90 percent certainty that's what happened um, this you know somewhere along in its life uh, somebody tried to reset the neck or did reset the neck I should say and uh, filled the gap underneath here I'm not sure how I'm going to approach this I, I you know I want to do whatever's the easiest and whatever's going to be, you know, the most cost efficient and uh, also the most structurally sound. So we'll have to see how I tackle this and I, I'm not 100% sure at the moment. So we'll, it'll develop over time here as we let this dry out. Really can't do anything till it dries out good. I've been talking, but you guys just haven't been listening, so I don't know how much I have missed here uh, because the camera keeps turning off on me. Um, so I'm not, I guess I'm not clicking it two times in a row is my problem. But we're working on the silver tone. It's been 24 hours. The neck has dried out really good now. I'm taking the shims off. In fact, I thought I was taking them off on camera, but obviously I wasn't. So I've got the shims off on one side. I still need to take the shims off on this side, so here we go. I really just want it back to bare wood so I can see where we're at. And I don't want to add shims to shims if you understand what I'm saying. I would just prefer to just put in what we need to put in and call it good enough. I, it looks to me like there was a big chip out right here that they shimmed over that chip out. And eh, that's not that bad, but I might want to fill that chip out, I don't know. You know, all the strength is right here, so you, you don't want to do anything that's going to cause a problem. There's a lot of, almost like gook down in the bottom there. Maybe the glue melted and sat down in here or something. Let's see how this fits in there now if it goes yep goes all the way down and you can see there's a ton of play in this I mean I don't think I've ever seen one as loose look at that oh my gosh that is the loosest neck I've ever seen oh my gosh it's bad it's really loose it's hard to explain how loose that is yeah it's it's about as loose as they come wow no wonder they shimmed it uh, and, and you know as far as I can tell we're at the original wood there I don't think there's anything um, missing that I can tell unless whoever did the the shimming you know actually did cut some off of this but I don't think so I think it looks original to me I think this was the way it was from the factory holy mackerel golly well I don't even know where to start with that because that's really a mess. Well, that puts it way over if we if we just yeah, just let it sit there. Let me try to. I've got it butted up tight now. We're still over. So, what do we want to do? Um, we were way below before. Now we're way over. Obviously, we're going to need shims. There's no question about that. 
I'm going to try cutting some thin shims and just leaving them loose, sticking them down in here and, and putting everything in place just to see where we're at because this is so far off I have no clue what we need to do. Well, I've got, uh, I've got a piece of maple cut here that I could use as a shim and just going to make it long enough to fit in there. This probably won't let it go down in there very far, but we'll see. I wanted to see how it fits up and how it lines up. You know, I, I needed something to give me an idea. Are we in the center? You know, are we going down the center here? That's just to the right of that big E string from my perspective. And it's just, it's a little bit more to the left of the small E string. So, the neck is tilted that way a little bit. It needs to come this way just a little bit. But then again, that could have just been the way I put it in there. I'm trying to understand why it's not pulling up tight here. The way I put those wedges in there, it should pull it tight against the face here. But it's not. So, what's the problem? Why is it not pulling it tight against the face? And, of course, you, as... As you may remember, this was a pretty good gap here that they had filled it with glue. So I don't want that to be the case. I want this to be tight when we're done. It looks to me like it's just cut wrong. It looks to me like that it's just cut tighter here than it is here. So I think we're going to get rid of some of the wood off of this right up in here on both sides. Now, some of that may just be glue and buildup. So we're going to start small, you know, you can always go more, but we're just going to take little bites here. Yeah, there's quite a bit of build up there. I, I see it now. So that may be the problem. In fact, there's a shim there, I think, which is definitely in the wrong place in my opinion. Okay, I really haven't taken off any of the original wood, believe it or not. I've just cleaned up the glue and cleaned up what kind of look like a shim. Now I'm just going to scrape the inside. I'm going to scrape it from the inside out to let the inside of this bevel be a little deeper, if you will. That'll help bring this, front, this edge out tight to the guitar body. I'm not really taking off much wood here either. Just a scraping. And we'll try cleaning up this side and then scrape it a little bit. If anything, from this outside edge, it should, and I'm exaggerating, but it should taper in like this. It shouldn't, you know, flat would be okay, but, you know, a slight taper in would be better. Just a slight taper. But what this is, it's... It's actually, if anything, it's tapering out like that. It's tapering the wrong way. And there's kind of like a high spot in the middle, which is not good at all under any circumstances. So I'm going to try to fix that. I don't know if I can, but I don't think I'm going to make it any worse because it's pretty bad. All right, let's just see what that looks like. May not have changed very much, but it it might have been enough to make a difference. It's tighter, there's no question. It's definitely tighter on the sides. Definitely tighter on the sides. But I still see the same problem. It's got there's still a gap here on the end, and I can still see it's tighter up at the top, up here at the near the fretboard, it's tighter. So we're gonna work on that a little bit more. But I think we're doing the right thing. That was just kind of a sanity check to see if we're improving, and we are definitely improving it. I'm going to get rid of this. There's a lot of glue here on this ex fretboard extension. A lot of glue sticking out here. And again, I'm going to cut away in here to give me to let to give this a chance to close up because it really can't close up with that hump in there. There's, 
there's it's just not cut the way it should work to make it all close up tight. close it, it needs to go this this way which means that I have to make this side thinner to let it go this way so the treble side needs to be just a hair thinner not much I'm just saying like five thousandths of an inch if that so we're gonna go ahead and thin them down a little bit and see what happens well I smoothed out those shims and cut them down a little bit th uh, thinner. There's no play in this at all now as you can see. It's just absolutely tight. There's no play up and down. It's uh, fitting as snug as a bug in a rug. Uh, there's almost no gap at all back here now and I would I really virtually say there's no gap there now. We're looking good. We're just to the right of that groove we're to the left of this groove just a fraction of a hair more but not hardly enough to care so I think we just need to sh knock the shims down a little bit more I'm just gonna run them through the thickness sander again knock off maybe another five or ten thousandths off of each one of them and uh, see what that does just trial and error basically well, there's one more thinning down and uh, it's getting tighter and I'm going to just look at it again and see. Yeah, there's really just no gap there now. That's good. Um, just making sure we're still relatively straight. Still probably needs to, the neck, the, the peg head needs to go this way towards me. Just a hair which means that that one needs to be just a hair thinner, but I mean like just a little bit. I mean hardly any at all. All right, let's see where we're at here. We're high about the same amount as we have gap here, if that makes any sense. So if we just keep going, I have a feeling we're going to be at the right angle. And, you know, I, I haven't measured it, so let's, let's try to measure it. Maybe we can measure it with my wedge here um yeah we're well we're pretty high it's uh 1550 thousands plus it's it goes it's more than the gauge can measure so let's let's go here and see if it's more than the gauge can measure here too no we're touching here already but not much we're touching it at about a hundred and 40 or 150 roughly I mean right in that area so if anything we want it to tilt just a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and take it off of here to give give me that because I think this needs it anyway this will bring it in a little bit tighter to the body just have to think about all the different angles and what's going to help your case and we're not taking much off here, you understand, because it doesn't need much. A little bit goes a long way on this. Yeah, we're about the same height now, so we gained a little bit of height, and that's what we wanted to do. So, let's thin the shims again and see where we're at. I'll just take another five thousandths off of each shim. And I took another five or six thousandths off of it and now let's see here we're starting to hit at uh, 140 thousandths we're hitting kinda in that neighborhood let's see what we got back here hopefully we're in about the same neighborhood and we're hitting a little sooner back here we're hitting at about a hundred thousandths hundred and ten thousandths so again, we need more off of here. And again, the center of this is touching, but the edges aren't. So we're gonna take it off the center right here, and I think that'll let it come back enough to make the difference. So 
what I'm trying to do now is actually cut a little bit of this plastic because the plastic isn't cut straight either. I'm exaggerating, but the plastic is tapered this way and tapered down this way. Taper, so there's a high spot in the middle of the plastic, so I'm trying to actually cut that out now to get it to match up with the flatness of the guitar body there. And then I'm going to shave a little bit off the inside down to this now. This way looks perfect. It looks perfect. Height wise, I think we might have gained some there. It looks like it. Okay, we're still touching here. Well, actually, we're only touching here at about 150 thousandths now. Hopefully, we've got at least 150 thousandths up here. Yeah, we're very close to it. Maybe a hair under it. Very close to it, though. So, we're really close. So once again, I think we're back to taking some off the thickness of this. We're going to go take another five or six thousandths off of this and see where that leaves us. Well, I took some more off those wedge, off the shims, and we're at about 80 thousandths gap under here yet. Let's see what we've got back here. Aha, looks good. 70 thousandths gap back there. So we're about 10 thousandths more here than back there. We're getting really close to where I can live with that though, I think. This is still real tight every, in every direction. So we're, to me, it seems like we're doing the right thing. I'm just going to run them through one more time. And I kind of think we might be there. In fact, maybe I'm even not going to run them through. Maybe I'm just going to clean this out a little bit better inside here. It's... Uh, not that terribly clean, actually. We're about the same, roughly. Really close. Alright, so I'm going to take the shims through one more time, and I'm hoping that's going to do it. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm hoping. Well, I've cut the shims down again. They're now down to only 24 thousandths thick. Yep. Uh, roughly half a millimeter, a little, little, right in that neighborhood. But they're starting to bow really bad because when you push them through that sander, it kind of heats up that one side. <sighs> Let's put them back in here one more time and see where we're at. I'm hoping this is it because I don't want to really run them through with that sander anymore. I, that sander can only cut down so far. <laughs> and 24 thousandths is about where you need to stop, you know? It's almost bottomed out. It's not quite bottomed out. I don't know if I can force it the rest of the way or not. It's pretty close to bottomed out. Let's see how we look on straightness. Almost perfect, I think. Yeah, pretty close, pretty close. Let's see where we are on height. I think we're going to be pretty close. We're at about 40 thousandths on height, and we're at about 20 thousandths here. So that's good. If we could get it the rest of the way, I think we're fine. I mean, we're 20 thousandths isn't much, guys. I wish I could get it to go that last little bit. Without changing anything, it would be awesome if it would just go that last little bit. Well, I see it rubbing in a place or two. I'm going to... See if we can't scrape it and get it that last little bit. say that's it oh perfect just it's about 20 thousandths if anything over that saddle which is be just fine maybe not even that much 
yeah, about 20, 22,000, something like that. And by the time we push this down the rest of the way, we, I mean, I think we're gonna clamp it and get a little bit more yet. I believe we're exactly where we wanna be. Double check the side to side, looks almost perfect. Yep, that's gonna work. I think we're there. No point in messing with it anymore. Looking down it, looks just right on the money. So, when you, when you get it there, don't fight it. Know when to quit. Let's glue this puppy up. I'm gonna try my little glue spreaders that different people have sent to me, different viewers. Maybe I'll switch from brushes to glue spreaders. I don't know. I've never really used the glue spreaders before, to be perfectly honest. Got them both in place. Now we need to put a little more glue on them, or actually I think I'll just put it on the neck to avoid moving those around too much. Well, we got the glue spread everywhere. We got had an interruption there. My uh, grandson got a skinned up hand, so we had to stop in the middle of everything. Um, hmm, I didn't clean that off good enough, now that I think about it. Doggone it. Should have cleaned that off before I put the glue on, but I didn't. You know, hindsight's 2020. Get in a hurry, that's what happened. It's kind of like Elmer's glue is what it looks like. And I'm just trying to get rid of it and get it back to bare wood and get at least and get it smooth mainly. Not so much. It's not working like I wanted it to. It's way bigger gap than there was a while ago and I guess the glue did part of that not getting it pushed together as quick as I wanted to with the wet glue versus it's sitting a little bit because of all the activity that came in the shop let's see if we can press it together if not we're gonna have to take it apart doggone it Take this off now and try to measure it and see where we're at. It would be hard to get it back off of there, but it would work. We're just about right at the right height there. It's kind of rubbing on it. And let's see what we are on the angle. A little bit off, just a little bit. I think we're okay. That's better. I believe we're close enough we can work with that based on what I can tell. It did get good and tight. There's glue squeeze out around. So we're just going to clean that up and then we'll let it set overnight. The neck reset has been sitting for several days. I'm going to put this fret back in that we took out and then I'm going to do a fret leveling. I'm not going to show that because I've shown it so many times, but I'm just going to do a, a fret job. If I run across anything interesting, I'll show that to you. Well, I said if I found anything interesting, I'd tell you about it. It's interesting to me. You may not feel the same way. These uh, single edge razor blades are just typical of the kind you can buy these days in your big box stores. I bought these, I believe, at Menards. It, I'm not picking on Menards brand over any other brand because I've noticed this on the other brands as well. All of these new modern razor blades have gotten so thin that they still work for what I'm doing here on cleaning the fretboard, but they are not as good as they used to be. I've always thought that. Well, when we were down in Mountain View, Arkansas, Bo, uh, fellow from, I believe, Louisiana, Bo uh, Horn, was there, a viewer that watches the videos, and he picked up this old box of vintage razor blades. 
and it's an old box you can tell you know you can look at the label on it and he picked them up at a garage sale or something and let me tell you they work much better you can just you can just tell they're a lot stiffer they just work a lot better so thank you very much Bo I appreciate it very much while we're on the subject let's just see if there is a physical difference I believe this is the first one of those I've opened and here's one from the previous batch this is a used one let's just get the calipers out and see if we can see a difference I don't know if we will or not but I sure do feel like there's a difference 8.5 thousandths so 8.5 thousandths is what we got there let's try this one and see if we can see a difference yeah 9.5 thousandths so it's a full thousandth of an inch thicker yep one full thousandth of an inch thicker and you think well that's not much it isn't really but it is when you're talking about steel and the length of that full steel there that extra thousandth of an inch makes a huge difference you can feel it looks good it feels good you can see there probably how shiny the frets are now there you can see the fretboard the frets are really clean looking now you can still see a little bit of fingernail grooves in there they were pretty darn deep sorry about the air conditioner running in the background guys every time I turn the camera on it seems to kick on I am going to oil the fretboard now and put the nut back on here and string it up and see what we've got. Friends, I got the guitar under tension. It's tuned up. Now, before I got it up to pitch, I checked the action and it was just like perfect. I have a feeling it's probably pulled a little bit more, but maybe not too bad. I'm trying to see where we're at now. Let's say we're at about 95. That's not too bad. It's just barely under 100. So that's not bad for a guitar like this. I'll, I'll take that. And uh, here we're right at 80. So about 95 to 80, I'll call that plenty good. Um, I think there's no reason to spend a lot more time and money on it. Um, I think it's just about as good as you can do on an instrument like this one. And let me see here. You know, and the reason it also is because of this crazy bridge I mean saddle I would have to take all this apart and it just takes like an hour to do it by the time you do everything and so if it's for five thousandths of an inch it's not worth that hour's expense you know so that's what I'm really trying to say here I, sometimes I don't explain myself very well the action here is very tight it's very tight eighteen thousandths there's no reason to mess with that either so it's a uh, you know it's just about perfect just the way it is so that neck reset was successful without having to tweak anything. I just love it. Well, it's awesome when a plan comes together. And this plan came together for this wonderful old silver tone guitar. Some people have told me to slow down on this, and I know that, but I'm always in a hurry. I'm sorry. So here's a little slower look at it. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm just in a hurry, guys, all the time. You should see me when I'm not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is slow <laughs> but that's a really nice old silver tone I mean I don't think you're gonna find one a whole lot better than this thing in condition wise just about as good as it gets and it does have real wood in the top you know now the, the sides are definitely plywood I'm assuming the back is plywood so you know there you go but it's a pretty decent little guitar pretty decent sounding guitar so here's what we got
at all. Plays real easy. You know, these kind of guitars are notorious for tearing up your fingers, but this one here is set up really well, I think. It's just about as good as it gets. New fret job, you know, neck reset. Can't hardly get it much better than that. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Let, let.